In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to include native plugins in Ionic 2 applications. Our native plugin uh, allows us to access native functionality uh, on a device, a functionality that's typically not available directly through the browser, which is where our application lives. And so what I have up on screen now is an example of that. We have two uh, we have two native plugins being imported from Ionic Native here, the status bar and splash screen plugins. And then we're calling some uh, functions here once the uh, application is loaded. So we're calling status bar .style default to style the status bar on the device. And we're also making a call to hide the splash screen. So both of these things are specific to a native device it's not something that's available through the browser so the status bar is the bar at the top that has the battery indicator and things like that and this plugin allows us to style that uh, of course in the browser that doesn't exist and same with the splash screen uh, that's only uh, visible or available on a actual native app that's installed on a device so to explain exactly how these plugins work, uh, I'm going to go sort of right back to the beginning and explain the core concepts uh, outside of Ionic 2 and just uh, the bare bones, the basics of Cordova itself. So if you don't already know, Cordova is what we use to package our Ionic 2 applications into an actual native application that can be submitted to an app store. Now you don't have to do this if you're just creating, say, a progressive web app that's going to run through the web. You don't need Cordova, but Cordova allows us to package our, our browser-based application into a native package that then has access to native APIs. So the browser itself can't access a lot of the, the native APIs on a device. Uh, if we want to access contacts, for example, we can't do that through the browser because the contacts live on the device and we're sandboxed into the browser that our application is running through, there's no way for us to grab those contacts because that's using a native API. Uh, so what Cordova does is since we're already in this native environment, we're running in a browser that is embedded into a native application. That native application that is uh, embedded into does have access to all those things. So the basic concept is that uh, Cordova plugins uh, provide a little bridge for us so we can make our uh, browser-based application communicate with uh, the Cordova package, which can then go communicate with the native APIs to get what we want, and then it can then tell us uh, the information we need. So the browser sort of makes a request to Cordova, that communicates with the device, the device tells Cordova what we wanted, and then Cordova gives that information to our application in the browser. So for Cordova itself, we don't need to use Ionic Two. We don't need to use Ionic 1, we don't need to use anything, uh, any specific frameworks. Cordova will just run uh, web uh, code. It's going to run HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if we wanted to, we could build our own just basic web page uh, just with plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, package it with Cordova, and we could make that into a native application. Uh, and you can use the plugins that way as well. We have, uh, say, the Cordova status bar plugin here. So all you need to do is run the install command for that once you have a Cordova project running. And you'll be able to access that with your basic uh, web page that you're packaging with Cordova. Uh, the problem with that is that if you're trying to build a mobile app, it is very, very hard to create a mobile app without a framework like Ionic. So that just makes it a lot easier for us to create something that looks like a real native mobile application. But my point is, though, that you don't need Ionic to use plugins. A lot of people will ask the question, uh, how do I use this plugin in Ionic 2? Uh, some people might think, well, I use this plugin in Ionic 1, but I don't know how to use it in Ionic 2. Uh, but the point is, there's no real difference there. It's the same plugin, and it's going to work the same no matter what framework you use it in, or even if you use no framework at all. So that's how Cordova works, and of course we're using Ionic 2 because we want to make it much easier for us to create these applications, and then we are going to use those Cordova plugins in Ionic 2. Now there is one little extra thing with Ionic 2 regarding plugins, and there was a similar thing for Ionic 1, which used to be ng Cordova, uh, but now it is this thing called Ionic 
native and you can find the documentation for that here so this isn't uh, this doesn't use any kind of different method for accessing native functionality it's still just using normal Cordova uh, plugins what Arnic native does is it adds this wrapper around that functionality if you look in the documentation for this uh, for example you'll find all the the methods for interacting with this plugin and the the status bar plugin is quite uh, simple uh, so it's probably not the best example here but a lot of Cordova plugins work with uh, they usually provide some global object and they provide some functions on that uh, which use things like callbacks typically callback functions and it's a bit messy to work with in the structure of an Ionic 2 application and so what the Ionic native service does is it wraps these uh, plugin interfaces up into something that integrates more easily with Ionic 2 so rather than using callback functions and global objects and stuff like that we just have this um, plugin that we can import like we import any of our pages and then that handles all of the type issues for us you may have run into an issue where you try to use some functionality and you get a TypeScript error saying uh, it doesn't know what it is, it can't find the type uh, Google for example. So if you tried to use a lot of plugins in your Ionic 2 application without Ionic Native it doesn't have the types installed and so if you use a plugin through Ionic Native you're not going to have to worry about running into issues with types and as well as that when you use a plugin through Ionic Native, it's going to return things like observables and promises and things that work better in the Ionic 2 environment. You can see here for the geolocation example they have here, uh, we've got a geolocation at watch position and then a subscribe. So this is returning an observable and we're subscribing to that observable, which then reports the position. So this is a very Ionic 2 way of doing things. Uh, but if you were to use the normal uh, geolocation plugin, so I've just got the documentation for that up now. Uh, so if we find the, uh, what we're we working with, watch position, you can see this is the normal Cordova way to use the watch position uh, function from the geolocation plugin. So we call navigator.geolocation, which is this global object. So that's going to cause issues for us with uh, types in TypeScript and then we supply it with uh, some callback functions and some options here so we have a, a success function and an error function and so that's going to then uh, when that result returns it's going to call this this callback or this callback and if you take a look just here you can see how that might look and this is uh, it's a very typical way to do things in JavaScript uh, but it's not the nicest way to do it. It's not the way we typically do things uh, using uh, Ionic 2. So Ionic Native just makes it a bit nicer for us to use. Um, but again, you don't have to use Ionic Native. Generally, I would recommend to use the Ionic Native implementation of the plugin wherever possible uh, because it is a lot cleaner and nicer to use, but it is not a requirement. Uh, this doesn't add any kind of extra access over what Cordova already provides. So if we just look at this plugin uh, itself, uh, you can see uh, there's a source folder here. And if we jump into there, you'll see a bunch of different folders. So we have a folder for Android and a folder for iOS. And so what this plugin does is it provides the actual native code for each uh, platform that it can run on, uh, which is going to communicate with those native APIs. So if I open up the iOS folder here, we can see the, the header file uh, for the uh, geolocation plugin. And then we just have this Objective-C uh, code, which is a native uh, code for iOS. It's what native iOS developers would use, uh, either this or uh, Swift. And this is what is responsible for uh, grabbing the information that we need from the native API. And then it provides that interface back to our application in Cordova so that we can then access those results from the browser. And it's the same for the, um, the Android version, uh, but rather than being Objective-C, it uses the native uh, language for Android, which is Java. And so you can see here's the, the Java code for accessing that same functionality. So it will provide the native functionality, the native code for each platform that it can run on, 
and then it's going to return that to us in this common uh, through this common API that we can access through the browser. So it's not going to matter whether it's running on Android or iOS. We're just going to be able to use the same code in our application. And you don't need to, unless you want to develop your own plugins, of course, uh, you don't need to worry about this actual implementation. I uh, just wanted to point out uh, a little bit about how it works. So if we just jump back to that example application I had before, so you can see here, as I mentioned at the start, we're importing those things from Ionic Native and then we're accessing them here. Uh, the other important thing to note is that you still need to install those plugins with uh, Cordova. So if we come back into the documentation here, I'll just bring up the uh, status bar plugin. Uh, where's that? you'll see there's this install command here. So that's what installs the Cordova plugin. So in the case of uh, status bar and the splash screen, they're actually already installed by default uh, because Ionic includes it in the um, app generation here. This is all just boilerplate code. Uh, but for other plugins you use, you'll need to make sure to run those install commands so you can access that functionality. So if I just serve that now, so you'll see in the console over here that uh, we're getting a warning, uh, which is another handy thing about Ionic Native is that it does provide these nice warnings for us if things are wrong, as opposed to using the Cordova plugin directly, which is just gonna create errors for us. Uh, but it says here, I uh, tried calling status bar style default, but Cordova is not available. Uh, make sure to include cordova.js or run in a device slash simulator. So as I mentioned at the start, this status bar, it's not available through the browser. It's a native thing and most uh, Cordova plugins access some kind of native functionality, which means you need to be running on a real device or on a simulator for it to work. So since I have the Cordova plugin installed and I'm trying to access the functionality here, if I was to instead run this on a real device, this code would work. Uh, but again, it's not going to work when I run it through the browser. Okay, so I hope this tutorial clarified exactly how a Cordova plugin actually works, uh, the difference between using a plugin in Ionic 2 or using it in any other framework or just using it with no framework, just directly through Cordova. The main point there is that it doesn't really matter. There's not any difference between using a Cordova plugin in Ionic 2 or any other framework. Uh, the only difference in Ionic 2 is that we have Ionic Native, which makes it a little bit easier for us to implement, but it is not at all required. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the next one.